All right, uh, today let's go ahead and continue programming our physics engine. What I'd like to do now is actually start taking steps to resolving collisions in a way that uh, will orient or rotate the bodies in a physically accurate manner. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what we had when we left off. So right now we can drop uh, rectangle bodies into the world and circle bodies into the world. And they will interact with each other, but they always stay oriented with the X and Y axis. So they're always axis aligned. Uh, but the steps I want to take now will allow us to rotate the bodies in a physically accurate manner. And in order to make that happen, I'm going to create a collision manifold. And the collision manifold is going to be a structure that's going to contain all of the information we need to resolve a collision between two bodies. So we're going to have the actual uh, references to the bodies that are intersecting. Uh, we're going to have the normal, the depth value, and then we're also going to have to store information about the about the actual points of collision. Where did these bodies collide? Or what is our best guess as to where they collided? So now before we get started, the uh, all the source code is going to be available in a link in the description of this video. So if you want to take a look at that and kind of follow along. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started creating our collision manifold for our objects. Here's where our world does its uh, physics step. Uh, let's go ahead and go back to the world class. And here is the actual physics step. So the first thing we do is the movement step, and then we do the collision step. And our collision step right now is completely linked to our collision resolution step. So every time we collide two bodies or we detect a collision between two bodies, we immediately resolve the collision. But instead of doing that, I'm actually going to move the resolution step out of the collision step and then resolve all the collisions that are detected in a separate loop after the collision step. And that's where the collision manifold is going to come into play. So we're going to uh, loop through, detect all the collisions, and then save the collisions to a list of uh, contacts or a list of collisions. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is actually create a structure called the collision manifold, or I'm going to call it the flat manifold in our library. Okay, so this is going to be a read-only struct. Well, the first thing we're going to store is actually a uh, reference to the two bodies that are colliding. All right, and if I go back to the world class, so once we detect a collision, we're actually storing the depth and normal value. So let's go ahead and get that information in there as well. In order to actually rotate uh, the bodies in a physically accurate manner, we need to store information about the actual point or points of contact. Now in two dimensions, there's two possibilities for the points of contact. We can either have one point of contact or we can have two points of contact. Let's go back to the draw program and actually take a look at uh, what that is. If we have two bodies, we'll just say one of them looks like this, and then the other one is oriented to look something like this. In this case, we would actually have one point of collision that will exist right here. But if we have another case, um, if we have two uh, flat bodies, and let's say they are exactly parallel to each other and they intersect something like that. In this case, if the edges are completely parallel and they, they hit at the same time, we're going to have two points of contact. And those points are going to be right here and right here. So we're going to have two options. Either there's one point of contact or we have two points of contact. And we're going to design a function that's going to actually detect where these, this point or these points of contacts exist. It's actually going to be kind of our best guess or our best estimate as to where they exist. Now, if we have a circle body, there's only going to be one point of contact. So anytime we have a circle body that's involved in the collision, there's only going to be one point of contact. And so if we had a circle body intersecting with one of our rectangles, that point of contact would be right there. So back in our code, so let's go ahead and store the location of these points of contact. So there can only be two of them. So I'm going to have two flat vectors that are going to be the points of contact. I'm going to call this contact one and then contact two. And then the last thing I want to do is actually store how many points of contact actually exist. And so I'm going to put this the uh, contact count. And that's everything we need for our flat manifold. We will store the two bodies involved in the collision, the normal and depth value, and then any points of contact we will need to resolve the collision and apply rotation. So real quick, I'm just going to create the constructor here. And then we'll pass in everything we need. All right, let me just start dropping some of these things down to the next line so they're easier to read. 
And then finally, let's store the values. So now we have a way to store the collision information. Let's go back to our flat world. Now inside our flat world, I want to create a list. And this is going to be a list where we can actually store the contacts. And so this will be our manifold list. And I'm just going to call this the contact list. Uh, inside our constructor, let's create the contact list. And then inside of our step function, so here's where we're actually doing the movement step. Here is our collision step. And uh, so after we detect a collision, instead of resolving the collision, I'm just going to store information about the collision. Now let's create a new flat manifold. Okay, and at this point, we don't have any information about the contact or where the points of contact exist. And so I'm just going to put some default values in there because we're not going to use it quite yet. So let's just put zero in for the actual positions. And the contact count, it will just be zero for now. And instead of resolving the collision, I'm going to now add that to the contact list. And now this resolve collision, I'm going to go ahead and cut this out of here. And after we detect all of our collisions, here's our collision step. Uh, we're going to make a separate loop, and we're going to loop through all of the contacts, or all the contact manifolds. And right here, let's go ahead and paste the resolve collision step in here. So now the resolve collision takes a, uh, these different bits of information, but we're storing all of these bits of information now as a, uh, as a manifold. And so I want to pass the manifold in instead of passing all the individual pieces. So right down here in our resolve collision function, let's go ahead and get rid of all of that. And we're just going to pass in the flat manifold. Okay, and I'm actually going to pass this as an in parameter. And the in parameter basically indicates that I, I'm passing this by reference, but it is a read-only reference. It's not a reference that I can modify. OK, so now the argument is actually a flat manifold. And so what I want to do here is um, start getting all of the pieces of information that we need to resolve the collision, and then making a, just a local reference to these things. So let's get the, the two bodies. All right, let's get the normal. And then finally, we'll get the uh, depth value of the collision. All right, and so as far as our function is concerned, everything should work exactly the same. I'm just passing in a manifold, and then I'm getting all the information from that manifold, and now we're resolving the collision in exactly the same way. Up here, when we resolve the collision, I need to actually get the uh, manifold that we're resolving. All right, and then we're just going to pass that into our resolve collision. We're going to pass the contact manifold into our resolve collision function. And we should be all done with that. OK, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. I think let's just run this and make sure everything works uh, like we were planning. And uh, so that didn't work exactly like planned. And the reason is I'm creating this contact list, and then I'm adding things to the contact list but I'm not clearing the contact list. So every time we go back through this collide function or this collision function, we need to clear the list. Or before we start the collision step, we need to clear our contact list. So back up here, right before we do the collision step, let's go ahead and clear the contact list. Okay, and let's go ahead and run that again and make sure everything works correctly. And everything looks exactly like it did before. Let's throw some circles in there as well, just to make sure it's, it's working correctly. OK, so that looks good. So that is our flat manifold uh, structure. And that has allowed us now to separate the collision step from the actual uh, collision resolution step. Uh, now that the collision is separate from the resolution, uh, we should be able to create a more efficient structure for uh, detecting collisions. So for example, dividing the world up into grids and only testing objects that exist in one portion of the grid or one node of the grid against those objects that are also in that same grid instead of objects that exist in the whole world. All right, uh, so kind of short and sweet on this one, um, but that's our collision manifold. So in the next few videos, we're going to start to change this resolve collision function. And we're going to get the information about the uh, contact points. Where do these objects actually collide in space? And then using that, uh, those points of collision to then rotate the objects in a physically accurate manner.